Hi, I'm Linda Jackson from Food Focus and I'm here this afternoon with Louis Manik from CRC Industries. Uh, Louis has sponsored a workshop on maintenance and food safety issues and uh, we've just finished the workshop, it went really, really well and I wanted to spend a few minutes with Louis just um, chatting about the specific uh, hazards that he's involved with controlling in the food industry and getting some last minute tips before we wrap this one up. Louis, thank you so much for the sponsorship of this workshop. It's really been great working with you and for taking the time to share with our users some of the information that you shared at the workshop. They couldn't be there, but at least they're getting a little bit of information from you now. Um, Louis, who's CRC? Uh, well, CRC is a, is a multinational situated in the USA and belongs to the Bourbon Company, group of companies. Uh, CRC has got operations in the, the US and Europe, um, out in Australia, uh, New Zealand, uh, the UK. So we're a, we're a global player when it comes to that. Uh, production is about 74 million cans per annum. So I think we're probably one of the top two companies, the uh, uh, chemical companies that you find globally. Wow, that's, that's really impressive. Um, and Louis, in terms of industrial chemicals, what exactly is that? Uh, industrial chemicals, it's a generic term. Um, basically, to, to put it in a nutshell, uh, chemicals are blended together for a specific purpose from an application point of view. Uh, CRC concentrates on the maintenance operation and um, uh, repairs side of the business. So the chemicals are really yet for that kind, of, that kind of market sector. In all different industries from mining, industrial, aviation, marine, auto, uh, food industry in particular. So those are the kind of chemicals that we provide for different, different industries and different sectors. Okay, so industrial chemicals and the food industry almost sounds like it shouldn't go together, but I'm assuming that you're talking about things like uh, lubricants that could be used yeah, in the food correct. industry, um, and uh, possibly some cleaning agents, solvents, those yeah, kinds of things, I, I, grease removers? Yeah, absolutely, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wide range of products that, that we supply. And uh, as we know, the food industry is very specific to the requirements. Uh, contamination is a big issue. Absolutely. So the products that we provide the food industry in the likes of lubricants, we make sure that they're internationally rated, like H1, uh, H2, 3H, when it comes to lubricants, and uh, meet and, and um, are compliant. And when you say compliant, what would be the way that you would measure your compliance? Well, we have third party verification okay. from the NSF uh, in the US uh, that would actually do the audits. They would uh, actually look at the products, uh, ensure that the products meet the standards okay. set by the ISO. Uh, and hence, if it meets all of those criteria and the uh, factory actually passes the audits, uh, we're an ISO 9000 factory as it is. Um, then eventually that you, you'll get your products actually listed with them and have it totally registered, have it registered registration numbers in their, in okay. their white book. Okay, all right. So, so, so you're also audited? How oh, are we audited? I think, yes, I, think, I don't think there's an industry that's not audited. Absolutely. Now, I think one of the challenges facing the food industry is the number of audits that they have to yeah. obviously go through. Sure. Um, and there's a reason for these food safety audits. Um, I know they can, you know, we complain about them, but at the end of the day, we're trying to make sure that the food industry has systems in place to manage hazards. That's now, what hazards are associated with industrial chemicals and, and what is it that, that, that CRC have done to make sure that you know, these products are not going to be a hazard in the food industry? I think it comes about um, managing chemicals properly. I think that's the biggest challenge the food industry has got. They need to understand what the standards are. The standards are guidelines for them to know where they can use what kind of products. Okay. We find that, uh, I'm generalizing in South Africa particularly, that uh, the industry is not fully aware of what those standards are and, and how that can actually work to their benefit. Okay. So what we've done is, uh, as an organization, we've put it together some training programs. Okay. We've put through uh, together a, a food zoning system whereby certain chemicals can be used in these various zones, specific chemicals in those particular zones, and avoid this kind of contamination problem that the food industry faces. So, so you, by zoning you mean making sure that I'm not taking toxic chemicals into an area Absolutely. where product is actually exposed? Absolutely. So when it, when you, we, 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 we call it the um, traffic light system. We use the three colors, the, the yeah. green, the, the amber, and the red. Whereas the food processing areas 
uh, would be a green zone. Yes. And you only take specific products in there, particularly during production, like H1 lubricants or 3H. Okay. Um, whereas you'll keep everything else where there can be no contact with food. But in your packaging areas and your workshops at the back, you could probably use a lot of precision cleaners, degreasers, uh, the standard uh, uh, products that you find in the market. But we recommend that they are all NSF approved because okay. third party verification is absolutely paramount, particularly from an audit perspective. You've got traceability and you get the correct products for that particular industry. So it's, it's peace of mind, really? It's peace of mind, yes. yes. Okay, so uh, first you're using terminology that I'm not familiar with. So uh, let's talk about H1, 3H. Okay. What, what, do the, what do those letters mean? Well, it's, you know, and, and, the, and I think your, your, point, your, your, your question is very important. Uh, the industry, I think, have heard about H1 and possibly 3H and H2. Basically, H1 product is a, a lubricant with incidental food contact and it's important for the industry to understand incidental food contact because they sometimes get confused, they think it's food safe, whereas, um, um, as we discussed at the workshop today, incidental food contact is, is almost minuscule contact okay, with so lubricants and food. So it needs to be properly managed. Absolutely, it's not intended to come into It's not intended, contact. it's by accident, but it has met a certain spec set by the uh, the ISO committee and obviously the NSF. Okay, and then uh, when you talk about 3H, that is a product that yeah. can be used with direct food well, contact. Well, it is. It's a soluble oil. Um, it can be used with direct food contact. It acts as a releasing agent uh, uh, for, for in, used in molds, etc. Different product altogether, usually very expensive. Um, and um, yes, you can actually, that can come in direct contact with food. When you look at the, the third lubricant, which is H2, no direct contact with food, kept outside. Usually these are very, very good lubricants in, uh, in itself, but you must make sure it's properly managed and that there's no direct food contact, whatever. Now, uh, Lily, you've got a great poster where you actually sort of define yeah, this whole yes. zoning. Wouldn't you like to you know, yeah, show I can our just, users I can how... just show you the... So what we've done is, <clears throat> just looking at this particular poster, uh, we've used the, as I mentioned earlier on, the green, the amber and the red areas. The green areas are where your food processing, where there's an exposure to, to food contamination by things like lubricants. Uh, so you would like to have a management system that can actually deal with your, all your, your, your chemicals in your plant. So that's really what this is. So what we've done, we've designed different posters uh, they're, they're from a visual point of view. Uh, management decide, uh, becomes part of the standard operating procedure as to what products can be used in which areas. And when we do this in conjunction with them, we can advise them as to which products they can actually use. And then what this poster goes further, it, uh, it, get, it lists the NSF definitions of all these various non-food compound uh, categories that they've got, so that there's a better understanding as to, to what they are. And I think what we've done, we've done, uh, taken this one step further, where we've linked products to the to specific zones to help management of food industry companies to, to manage something which is usually pretty complex. Absolutely. That's great, Louis. I love the colors and I love the way that, you know, you're using a sort of a simple zoning concept to actually uh, literally design out the hazards That's that great, could yeah. actually be introduced in those areas. Okay, so today we specifically wanted to talk to auditors and we also wanted to talk to the food safety managers and we wanted to talk to the maintenance managers. So if we go through those three, what advice, what would be the golden nugget that you would give to the maintenance manager? Well, the maintenance manager needs to understand what these um, different uh, NSF uh, categories mean. I think they, 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 it becomes important. They also need to understand uh, what, is, what, is, uh, what is meant by incidental food contact, for instance. Yes. Uh, they, they, I think there's a lack of understanding. I think uh, in the past, people glibly used the, the term food safe lubricants and not fully understanding what Absolutely. they meant. And I think we've got to a stage in the, the whole development of the food industry that, uh, that uh, is now inexcusable not to actually understand what those standards are because of the consequence of contamination as a result of using the wrong product the wrong in the wrong place. Okay, so it's definitely not about cost, it's about managing no, I, the hazard. And, and I think it becomes a cost reduction, believe Absolutely. it or not, okay. if you actually do use the correct products for the correct areas. Excellent. What would you tell the food safety manager? I think the, the food safety manager needs to get involved. You know, um, They're involved with HACCP, uh, mm -hmm. identifying critical control points. 
And although this is contentious, uh, the use of chemicals can in fact become a critical control point that needs to be mitigated against. Uh, um, they need to be fully aware of what these categories are in, the, in, the, in, the, in these various uh, NSF, the way that NSF has, have actually depicted them. And they also need to understand what chemicals are actually on the plant. Mm. We find that the, um, uh, the, 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 the um, HACCP teams, uh, the food uh, manager or safety managers, don't know what's in their plants. They may have a very good idea on, on the lubrication side of things, but when, it, when you get to the other products, they, they're really not sure. And we find that uh, if you go into the workshops, they use all sorts of different products. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's almost like a bit of a blind spot for the industry. And it's an unnecessary blind spot because there are systems here that can be used and they can actually mitigate to get all against all of those kind of risks. Absolutely. And then lastly, and maybe we shouldn't actually give this advice, but we should. What would you tell the auditors to look for? If you were going in to do an <laughs> audit on the plant, what would you tell the auditors well, to look for? You know, I'd say, well, firstly, you know, uh, the auditors need to look and, and have a look and see what's behind all those locked cupboards oh, and doors and so in you also drawers. See those locked cupboards. Um, okay. We find that that, uh, that sometimes the guys are a bit on the naughty side and they, and they do tend to hide things. Um, and, and I don't think it's anything too malicious. I think it's a question of they don't want to get into trouble. Uh, and there's also a lack of knowledge or lack of knowledge of products as to what they can use. They don't need to do any of this if they actually just follow those simple principles of mm -hmm. utilizing products that have got NSF codes, mm -hmm. for instance, that, and, and they've got a management system for it. Mm -hmm. So yes, uh, those are the kind of things that auditors need to look for. We come across it fairly often. And, and also understanding where those products are used. I don't mm -hmm. think the auditors always know where they use the products. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's good to know that because, um, uh, and, and, uh, you know, it's just getting a much better feel of managing your plant name where those risks are and, just, and, and actually just mitigate against it by using simple management tools. Now, during your presentation, Louis, you mentioned the fact that there's a safety file and there's a whole lot of documentation yeah. which should be available to confirm that the product that is in use is the right product for its application and that it is actually safe for use within yeah. the food facility. And we, we're a big proponent of that. We, we feel that uh, these products, if, if uh, the products are there for the food industry, they need to be supplied with product data specs, material data specs, NSF uh, letters, uh, certificate of acceptance, um, any of those kind of certificates, uh, we often get asked to provide an ISO yes. certificate from the factory. Mm -hmm. These make up a safety file. Mm. And in that way, the auditors have got um, access to the products and what the products are all mm. about. And, so, and, and likewise, the maintenance mm. managers. So I think it's, it's a good process. Mm. I don't think it's something that needs to be fought against. It's actually very, very simple to And we do this as a matter of course with our clients. Sometimes they just, we just provide them with the information. Other times we actually put the files together for them. Now, I think you mentioned something very important in closing, and that is that having the information available is not just for the auditor. No, it's for the no. maintenance manager Absolutely. to have confidence that he's yeah. using the right product. Absolutely. Um, and ultimately, at the end of the day, we're trying to ensure that food is safe for consumption. We're consumers and, and we would obviously want to know that the companies that are providing our food are doing everything they possibly can to ensure that chemical hazards, or potential chemical hazards, are in fact controlled. So it's not about just passing the no, audit. No, it's not just about passing the audit. I think that's probably the last hurdle. It's a pro about having a proper uh, chemical maintenance plan or management system in place. Uh, and, and you're quite right. As consumers, we'd like to know those things are in Absolutely. place. Uh, People sometimes think these things come at an additional cost. I, we, we don't find that. We find that there's a form of rationalization. Once you work through, there's a lot of extra products probably used, which is probably unnecessary. So we found actually that not to be entirely true at all. That's great news. Well, Louis, thank you so much. It's been great working with you. It was a great workshop. Thanks to everybody who joined us. For those of you that didn't and you have to watch this video version, well, sorry for you, but catch us on the next one. Thanks then. Bye.